It is a fact that hundreds of thousands of Soviet soldiers collaborated with Nazi Germany during World War II, resulting in the creation of an entire anti-Soviet Russian army under German control. That this even came about is nothing short of extraordinary, considering the barbarism of the Germans in the Soviet Union during their invasion in June 1941, and the years of grim fighting which followed. The despicable treatment of captured Soviet soldiers was one of the war's great crimes, but from these starved and brutalized masses, the Germans were able to recruit tens of thousands willing to serve new totalitarian masters, and the eventual foundation of a Russian army commanded by Russian officers but under German command. And all this happened against Hitler's wishes and desires, and largely because of a propaganda ruse that got out of control. This is the story of the Russian Liberation Army, Hitler's Soviets. Before the war, the German and Soviet militaries actually maintained a cordial and collaborative relationship. Before Hitler came to power in 1933, Weimar Republic Germany, its army restricted to 100,000 men by the stipulations of the Treaty of Versailles, used training bases in the Soviet Union to conduct secret tank training and development, along with many other illegal military developments. During the early Third Reich era, friendly military relations continued even though Hitler made no secret of his desire to one day expand East and defeat Communism. Shortly after Hitler invaded Poland in September 1939, Stalin followed suit and invaded Poland from the eastern side, the two dictators dividing the country between them. The surprise German attack on the USSR, Operation Barbarossa, on the 22nd of June 1941, would lead to massive Soviet losses, as German panzer thrusts caused huge encirclements of entire Soviet armies in the six months up to winter 1941, when the German attack was halted by severe weather conditions and stubborn Soviet resistance at the gates of Moscow. The numbers of Red Army prisoners were staggering, during the war, the Germans would take prisoner 5.7 million Soviet servicemen and women, herded into extremely basic POW camps, and later used as forced labor, at least 3.3 million died of starvation, disease, and summary execution. You would have thought that because of such treatment, no Soviet prisoner would have considered serving the Germans. But you have to remember that the USSR was an empire that encompassed many nationalities and ethnic groups. In Ukraine, for example, many welcomed the Germans initially as liberators from Stalin's tyranny, and the Germans would actively recruit thousands of Ukrainian Red Army prisoners as SS auxiliaries, and they would play a vital role in guarding concentration camps. They were nicknamed Travnikis, after the concentration camp where they were trained as guards. The Cossacks were another marginalized and persecuted group in the USSR, and tens of thousands joined the German army, which maintained an entire Cossack division. Red Army collaboration was inadvertently encouraged by Stalin's decree that captured Red Army soldiers who made it back to Soviet lines were to be punished for having surrendered in the first place. Semi-official recruitment of anti-communist Red Army POWs occurred early on in the Eastern Front campaign, when some were recruited by individual German divisions to help in non-combat roles. They were called Hivis, from the German Hilfswillige, or volunteers, and wore a yellow armband denoting their status. Before long, some were uniformed and armed, and used to guard depots and the like, and fight partisans behind the German lines. Hitler was always against the creation of an official Russian collaborationist army, his racial prejudices against Slavic peoples vocal and well-known. But many German officers realized that the Wehrmacht had a huge manpower reservoir lying virtually idle. Tens of thousands of Red Army POWs were anti-communist or certainly ambivalent about Stalin's regime. Dr. Goebbels' propaganda ministry circulated leaflets along the front lines, suggesting that thousands of Red Army men had gone over to the Germans and had joined a so-called Russian Liberation Army, 
No such organization existed, yet. But it was a fact that some Red Army soldiers did indeed surrender or cross the lines because of this propaganda to join this mythical unit. So why not turn propaganda fantasy into reality? One of the Soviet officers captured at Leningrad was Lieutenant General Andrei Vlazov. He was a decorated officer who was highly thought of in the Red Army. Following his capture, however, Vlazov revealed that he actually detested communism and hated Stalin. Was this opportunism on Vlazov's part, or did he really believe what he stated to German interrogators? Which is hardly surprising, considering how Stalin had butchered a large number of Soviet officers just before the war. This debate continues in Russia even today. Vlazov was recruited to the idea of forming a real Russian Liberation Army, and even a provisional Russian government to rule post-communist Russia under German auspices. Vlazov was a vocal critic of Stalin, and wrote several leaflets that were dropped on Red Army positions to encourage further defections. Vlazov toured captured Soviet cities, reviewing parades of ex-Red Army men in German service, but it would take the intervention of Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler in September 1944 to finally permit the formal creation of the Russian Liberation Army. Himmler recruited extremely widely for the Waffen-SS, owing to perennial manpower limits on recruiting from the German army, and he understood Vlazov's value as Germany faced an increasingly precarious military situation on both the eastern and western fronts. The German army had come to rely heavily on so-called Ost battalions of former Red Army troops of varying quality on the western front, for example in the Battle of Normandy in June 1944. In fact, 42 Ost battalions served in France, Belgium, Italy and Finland. On the 14th of November 1944, Vlazov announced the formation of the Russian Liberation Army in a speech in Prague. In the end, only one actual division was raised out of ten that were planned. The 600th Russian Infantry Division was founded on the 1st of December 1944 in Munsingen, Germany, and by late January 1945 it was complete. It was a mishmash of former collaborationist Russian units, including the remnants of two Russian Waffen-SS Grenadier Divisions, 13 Ost Battalions from the German Army, and large numbers of fresh POWs and forced labourers. At full strength, the 600th amounted to 18,000 men. Equipment was piecemeal, including captured Soviet T-34 tanks and Hetzer tank destroyers from the German army. The divisional commander was General Lieutenant Sergei Bunyachenko, a former Red Army colonel who had been captured by the Romanians and then went to work for the Germans. Part of the division first saw action against the advancing Red Army in February 1945 at the town of Neulevin, on the Oder River, and successfully held its positions. Thereafter, in March 1945, the entire division joined Army Group Vistula. It took the field against the Red Army at Erlenhof on the 13th of April, losing 370 killed in action, before being shifted to trying to stop the Soviet advance through Austria. In early May 1945, the 600th Division was concentrated at the city of Kozoyedi in Czechoslovakia, east of Prague. The war was almost over. General Bunyachenko held discussions with Czech partisans concerning a planned uprising in Prague, which occurred on the 5th of May 1945. Bunyachenko actually assisted the Czechs in fighting the Germans. Incredibly, the 600th lost over 300 men killed fighting German forces around Prague. But if they thought that switching sides so late in the war might save them from Stalin's wrath, they were mistaken. The 7th of May 1945, Bunyachenko withdrew what remained of the 600th from the Prague region and attempted to reach General George S. Patton's U.S. Third Army, which had established itself just over the border in western Czechoslovakia, and surrender, thereby avoiding Soviet retaliation. But in a move to appease Stalin, the Americans promptly handed over the Russian Liberation Army troops to the Soviets, the British doing the same with Cossacks that had surrendered to them. The Russian Liberation Army soldiers mostly ended up in the Gulag system for years of imprisonment, while the Russian Liberation Army's leaders 
were given show trials and executed. The big prize for the Soviets was General Vlazov, and he was captured in a convoy of vehicles 25 miles southeast of Pilsen in Czechoslovakia, not very far from US lines, by men of the Soviet 25th Tank Corps. He was found hiding in a car and then bundled onto a tank and driven to the 13th Army headquarters, then on to Marshal Konyev's command post in Dresden, and thence by plane to Moscow and NKVD headquarters at the Lubyanka. After considerable interrogation for many months in the Lubyanka, Vlazov, along with Bunyachenko and nine other senior Russian Liberation Army officers, were placed on trial and then hanged the 2nd of August 1946. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.